Welcome back to the Playmakers. Guys, how about them Jayhawks? Upsetting number six TCU on Friday, four to three, after a two run rally in the eighth. That's intense. That's seriously intense. <laughs> Unfortunately, the same nobody spell. Saw coming, so. Nobody yeah. saw it coming. Oh, the same spell took over for the next two games in the series. But it was nice to see the fire in these guys. They have it in them, especially on a rich price coach team. Oh, yeah. Uh, coach Price, I think he was one of the best coaches here. Well, yeah, he has over a thousand wins in his yeah. career. Mm -hmm. So he, he's the coach who's going to get it done, turn this program around. And so there was two games this weekend, besides the one Kev already went through first Friday, and uh, this is the one that KU uh, would win. And, uh, you know, this is a game where they, they won 4-3. Kraus set the tone. Uh, he's able to manufacture runs, and the bullpen played pitch really well. They did. Early in the game, uh, both pitchers were dealing, but they both allowed one uh, solo home run. Each each team got one solo home run in the first inning, and then the pitchers Shroud. settled down. Yep. And I like you said, scout, yeah. yep, Krauss settled down, uh, and KU was able to uh, a little bit, of, little bit of power of their own there, yeah. Joe Maroney. Exactly, that, that's what I mentioned earlier. Joe Maroney hits the first inning home run, uh, and they were able to manufacture runs the rest of the game, three more of them uh, for KU. Later, Luke and Baker wasn't much of a threat on the mound, but... He can handle the bat pretty well. He could, and he, he played the H when he wasn't pitching. But Owen Taylor here with the sack fly to get the fourth run, and that's the winning run right there. And you see how excited the team is getting. They At the end of the game, they they left the, the bullpen like they won the College World Series. Yeah, the, the, the whole team was excited. Right, right here, this is what, this they is what we're talking pumped. about. They were pumped. They were cheering. They piled up on the mound. It was, it was a lot of fun to watch. There was a lot of energy in the stadium on Friday night. Saturday? Not so much. Uh, Saturday, they got they got shut out, uh, eight to nothing. Uh, at, it was four to nothing after three innings, yeah. and then they can just continue to go downhill. You see, Cage is kind of out of it already to start yeah. the game. There, low, low low energy, and then you know just just spot on hitting by TCU as they had 13 hits. Yeah, KU couldn't muster anything, and TCU just was hitting everything. Uh, the pitchers were giving to them. So it wasn't much of a game. And then Sunday, like I already went through, uh, they swamped uh, KU, 16 runs. Well, I think that just goes to show what a solid pitching performance can mm -hmm. do for you. You can go up and just, I mean, match the number six team in the country after not getting any kind of AP nod for the longest mm -hmm. time. You can go up, match them inning by inning, uh -huh. come out in the bottom of the eighth, and surprise them. That's the that's the thing with baseball. If your pitching yep. is on, you can win any game. Yeah. yeah, pitching wins World Series. They win championships. So if you get a great pitching performance like Ben Krauth gave to KU on Friday, you can be anyone mm -hmm. in the world, really. Well, and that's the kind of presence that Krauth brings to this team. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, they knew it before the season coming into it, but it's just it, it's proven now. That's the presence he brings. That's the kind of pitchers that KU needs to be looking yeah. to either make or recruit. And yep. like like we said, if he can set the tone early and that he can bring confidence to that bullpen, because that bullpen struggles once the mm -hmm. starters go out, yeah. then it's good. All right, looking forward, the KU baseball team will face Aust or Texas in Austin for a three-game set. Uh, it's another tough Big 12 game. And they're, uh, take, they're taking down the road. Yeah, so KU doesn't have a home field advantage in Lawrence, but they don't, they're, are, they're not at a disadvantage while being on the road. They don't have that while they're, they're in Austin, Texas. So it's, it's going to be a tough matchup for, for the baseball team. All right, next we're going to look into the softball team who had a successful weekend going 4-0 at Orocha Ballpark. The ladies took on North Texas and Georgia Tech twice over the three-day span, peaking with a doubleheader against the two teams on Saturday. Nick, you're the beat writer for softball. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. <laughs> we're so proud. Loud and proud. <laughs> um, tell us about it. Well, Friday was a quick one. It was, it was a pitching battle. It was only one run. Uh, scored a Shannon McGinley uh, single here uh, early in the first inning, and then it was the the, the Andy Formby Harley Reeling show. Andy Formby, a, th a three hitter uh, shutout, gave up no runs, and Harley Riddling great behind the backstop. She threw she threw out a runner, giving a little bit of a, a top performance by her behind the plate. She missed all of last season, so good to see her doing well uh, behind the plate, and she really connects with Formby as you see all these. You get the K meter out because. Form be just when she's electric on the mound when she's out there. Yeah, she she played well all three games she pitched this weekend. They, she just dealt 
all weekend long. No, there were very few hits against her, and it continued Sunday. Uh, here, it was a one nothing win on Friday. Uh, Andy Formby got the win. Texas, North Texas on Saturday, it was more of the same. This Kansas offense is deadly when they're on. There's a double to left center. From Riddling. From Riddling. It'll score two. And on Saturday, both games, they scored almost all their runs in the fourth inning. We see KU has uh, the bases loaded, and they, they poke one through for a single, another score, another run scores. They, they scored seven runs in that fourth mm -hmm. inning, and it was kind of deja vu a little bit yep. because both games they did mo all the majority of their scoring in the, in the fourth inning, uh, and, and uh, Danielle Chavez, again, uh, she gets out of that slump mm -hmm. uh, that she's been in uh, offensively, getting, you, the, getting the walk-off double there. Yeah, you see they got 12 runs off nine hits in that game, a lot of walks, and then you go into the Georgia Tech game, De deja vu, deja yeah, vu. Deja another, really. another five run, uh, five run rule game, and uh, Andy Formby uh, again, lightning on the mound, uh, gave up one run early. She seemed a little bit fatigued to start out, but once uh, Kay got the bats going, can't stop him. Eleven hits on ten runs. That's consistency, right that there. That is, that is very efficient offense, very consistent. Lots of great pitching. They what they did. They were situational. They took their walks. They were, ba they were very patient, patient very patient. at the plate. So they weren't just up there trying to swing for the fences. They they took their pitches. They waited for something to drive or just poke one through the infield and score some runs. That's a lot of discipline there. That's yeah. that's very good mm -hmm. to see. Especially I mean, really the, the new hitting coach T.J. Halbert. He's yep. been preaching that. That's what mm -hmm. Coach Coach Megan's been saying through. after the game. Yeah. Or really had. Four RBIs. Yep. She Four and even RBIs. if she didn't have RBIs, she started off exactly. every inning with a like, hit. That's so, a great yeah. stat. Great and a stack. home run. Okay, we're gonna move into a segment we call Diamonds, Double Play, Hits, and Double Plays, Double Plays, plays and Dives. And drives, and drives, and drives. 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 There was a lot of defensive plays this weekend, so we thought we'd show the world the great defense from this weekend. Diamonds, double plays, and dives. All right, coming at you, TCU swing. Ooh, that's your belly. Tommy Marabelli, yeah. Tommy yep. Marabelli, I like yep. seeing him out there. Uh, Podiacek is, has started at third base for a while there. Oh. Another Funny. play by Marabelli. They don't call it the In hot, the hot corner, corner yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's another, stick, sticking with baseball here. Deep fly to right field. Joven Abner lays uh, out. Sports Not center. surprised there. He yep. makes sports our top 10 most on, third, on a weekly basis. His third diving catch in the last two years. Made it on Sports Center again. Over to wow. softball. Well, not all baseball on this one, but a deep fly to Shannon McGinley. She lays out in foul territory. Foul territory. It would have been a foul ball, but she's able to dive, and she gets the out. Stands up, brushes it off. No problem. <laughs> Back to baseball. A long drive for KU, but the TCU outfielder, what a dive there yeah. to save a run. Yeah, it saved a run. They were able to stop the Kansas uh, offense from scoring that inning. Totally stopped the, the, the rally and... I mean, TCU went on to win that game, so what a big out that was. Yeah, lights out plays. Well, that's it for tonight's Monday edition of The Playmakers. Remember to tune in every Monday at 6 and every Thursday at 6.30 for all of the latest updates and analysis on every KU sport in action. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at PlaymakersKU. Very, not very, just yeah. Twitter. Not just Twitter. We Instagram. Have Instagram. Too. We're periscoping live today. We have Snapchat. And Snapchat. Snapchat. Don't forget Snapchat. Follow us on so, it all. Everything. <laughs>